Art of Influence is my latest series here at the Underground Gallery, and it's kind of paying homage to all the artists that have inspired me, influenced me, have been a part of my career to date, whether it's been their styles, how they have taken their career, um, really anything. I've just wanted to take this moment to celebrate them because they're a reason I am who I am today. Um, in true Taylor fashion, I actually kind of forgot about this show uh, until I was asked when do I want to set it up. They are like, when do you want to come in and put your new series into the show? The one that I didn't even start yet. So I had to kind of the last minute pull everything together and see what I wanted to paint. And I think that's why it was so easy for me to choose these people because they're part of my everyday influence. It was about three weeks from start to finish of when I found out about the show to when they had to be hung on the wall. Um, and it was really exciting for me to be able to include elements onto the walls in the gallery to be able to include parts of my process because I think that's super important is seeing how things even got there. And it's great to just see it all come together today. So Picasso, he has been huge for me. Not his style, I actually don't really like his paintings, which is actually kind of funny. It's his career and his just like view to the man, basically. Like he could paint a hyper-realistic, beautiful portrait, but he decided to learn all the traditional rules and then break them. And I think that's so amazing and I've utilize that in my career the whole time. I went to art school, I did all the traditional training when it came to design, and then when I graduated I realized I'll keep some of those pieces, but I also want to do whatever I want. <laughs> and that has worked really well for me. Um, at school they used to say you have to pick one thing and you have to be known for that thing, and that made me want to die. I don't even want to think about having to paint the same thing for my life. So he was a huge influence, even back in the day when he was in his prime. Um, it was even crazier to break the rules like he did. So he's always been that to me. Uh, the system. <laughs> and oh, yeah, yo -y. So she is actually also still alive. She's a 93 year old badass Japanese artist who grew up in Japan where art was mainly for men. Her parents didn't want her to be an artist. Um, and she just had these visions of everything being these colorful dots. And she just, her whole career and style has come off these like colorful dots, the interconnectedness of everyone, the elements of pattern, color. Um, that was a big thing that I add into my work too. I'm like, wildly attracted to work that's very different than my own. She's super abstract, she has no figure or anything, and I just really love that decorative element of her style that I've included in mine as well. You can see there's dots everywhere, and I just picture like myself being a 93-year-old pink-haired woman painting my life away, and so that was a huge She, I'll keep painting until I die, was her quote, and uh, I just love her resilience and commitment to doing what she knows she has to do. Oh, Salvador Dali is, how are you not inspired by this guy? Look at that thing. To my knowledge, he's the first artist I was really ever inspired by as a kid. Um, those toothpick legged elephants or stilt legged elephants, right? The surrealism elephants were just so weird. And I've never really was exposed to that weirdness of art. And it really opened up like, again, like Picasso, he really opened up uh, the doors of like, do whatever you want. Like, who cares what anyone thinks? Who cares if that doesn't exist? Paint anything. And if you go into onto Instagram, it's like Monsters by Tay on Instagram. You can see like 15 years ago, everything I was drawing was like weird as shit. And it was completely because of this guy. Um, I think he really opened up that world for me. And again, color, creativity, there you, again, like you said, where do you start with him? Where do you stop? Um, just his mustache alone is inspiring. <laughs> and then Frida, you just can't go wrong. She's just an iconic artist, a female artist, right? We don't have loads of them in old, old history when it comes to art. So it's so nice to see these, again, badass ones popping through. And she was such like a portrait artist. Um, I do my annual birthday portraits and I was pretty heavily inspired by her, Picasso too, but um, just depicting yourself in different ways and seeing yourself throughout the years. And again, just 
sand cue to the world. <laughs> Excuse my language. I, uh, it was just so inspiring that despite all of the struggles that this woman went through, she just maintained her poise and her passion for painting. Her quote is, I paint my own reality. The only thing I know is that I paint because I need to. And I really relate to that too. It doesn't really matter what I'm painting. I just love painting. And I know it's what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's, she's been the make your own moves. Who cares if you're a woman, you can do whatever you want. And uh, that's a huge inspo for a lot of people. Oh, Andy. He's probably visually with this series, the one that I like and was inspired by in stylistically more than the rest. It's a little more obvious why he's up on this list. Like pop art is kind of the main term used to describe my work. And not only his use of color, his use of celebrity, he really for his time brought contemporary art, like fine art and kind of shoved it together into like printmaking and merch and that kind of thing where that is frowned upon by some artists or wasn't really done by artists before him and for me personally adding prints and making my work into merch and things like that stickers whatever has blown up my career and has let me share my work all over the world and he was the pioneer for that he was kind of the first influencer i feel like back, back in the day before social media existed like he was doing brand deals he was getting photographed with celebrities he would had just like such an interesting outlook on fame and I'd be so curious to see what like his Instagram page was like or you know like what he would do with social media these days because I give social media is the reason I have a career um so it's just very interesting to know like what he would have done with that And then the last two of the series are actually just everyday artists, um, li living artists. I follow them on Instagram and I have followed them both for years and they are amazing in their careers. And realistically, they have both inspired me the most when it comes to style, their use of color. They always use rainbow flare on everything. And before I saw both of them, I was always trying to get pushed into just painting neutral toned or regular colors because that's what people want more and that's what people will buy and it just never felt right to me um, but I never really saw other people doing color the way that these two did um, Kate Tova and Dave Sharp uh, and it just didn't feel right to me to make a series of artists that I was influenced by without these ones because they are on my feet every day um, their career paths, their choices that they made in their career, their content they put out. It's just very admirable to me in my career. I'm behind them and I'd love to get to where they are. And they're living people every day that are proving me that it's possible. And it's uh, an honor for me to have them in this series with everybody else. I just need to make a comment towards Fluvog. They have been such a great company community to deal with. They hold your hand throughout the whole process. They give you full freedom, free range to do whatever you want and really give us a stage to be ourselves on. And I owe this whole series really to them.